Hello everybody, and welcome to another video uh, of Let's Play Final Fantasy VI, in fact, the finale. The last episode of FF6, today we'll be going into Kefka's Tower, and as far as I can make out, uh, we're not even necessarily saving the world here. Uh, we're basically on a quest for revenge, for vengeance, uh, and that's about it. I mean, there's a chance that we can deal with this whole issue with the Warring Triad. But, uh, you know, Kefka kind of won, and um, we just want to go deal with him. Uh, there is kind of a, a sense that he's harassing people and burning towns and stuff with this machine, the Light of Vengeance. But yeah, kind of a fun twist and a bit of a difference from most RPG stories. So before we head into the tower uh, for the finale, I thought well, it would be great for a finale. Well, here's two ways in which I want to disappoint you at the start. <laughs> uh, two things I've not done. So first, I want to talk a little bit here at the head about desperation attacks. So if you remember, there is a system in this game, the desperation attack system. It's kind of like a weird pre-limit break mechanic where each character has their own special ability and it only procs when you trigger a basic attack, not magic or any special ability, which is what you're going to be doing late game, frankly. But if you do a basic attack while they're on low health, then they'll do this special thing. And it's very hard to see because there's always something better to prioritize. Usually if someone's low, you're going to be trying to heal it as fast as possible. Not to mention the fact that the combat balance in 6 kind of gets a bit skewy, right? And yeah, I don't know whether you really even see people on low health that often. But anyway, everyone has one of these desperation attacks. Cool animation, name for it. Like even some of these hidden characters at the end. Gogo -Go has one. He has like a mini meteor ability. Out of the entire cast, only two people don't have desperation attacks attacks and that's basically because they're mechanics as far as I can see you've got uh, Gao who obviously is gonna be raging and then we'll just become a monster and do monster stuff and monsters don't have desperation attacks and Umaro as well I feel like Umaro could have had one and in fact if they'd assigned him one uh, you probably would have seen it quite regularly because he's a berserker you just keep attacking even when low anyway he's like the most fitting to have one uh, but he doesn't either. Everyone else has one. You know, Terra has Riot Blade. Locke has Mirage Dive. Shadow has Shadow Fang. I think we saw that. So it's not the most amazing thing, but it is cool just for the fact that this is like the precursor to the Limit Break system. This is Final Fantasy VI. The immediate next game, seven, t took this idea and ran with the ball and turned it into Limit Breaks. Limit Breaks were there through the entire golden era of this franchise, uh, and it's kind of a big deal for Final Fantasy, so it's nice to see their genesis. So the whole series that I've been wanting to show them off and somewhere in the back chunk of these videos I kind of decided what, what I'll do is a montage of them and the montage get, kept getting pushed off and off and then I thought I'll do it in the finale well so here you can see I'm in the Phoenix cave and what I'm doing is I'm using the spikes to put my characters to low health and then my idea is I'll trigger a random encounter there'll be low health already I just hit attack and boom there you go you can see it and I was, I was going to do this 12 times in a row for every single, you know, different party member. Which would include multiple different trips down here to the cave because you can only actually bring eight at once. But this whole thing just kind of ended up a massive pain in the ass. Like, even when you're low on health, I just couldn't get these things to proc. Enemies can kill you really easily, obviously, because you're sitting there nearly dead. Like, here, I actually get a game over in this fight. I also can't just leave, put everyone low, leave, and go somewhere easier where the encounters wouldn't be such a risk. Because to leave this dungeon, it's a double dungeon, it will full heal you and just put you back in control of one guy like Setzer or whatever. So then I thought, well, okay, it's all on YouTube. Um, maybe I'll splice some footage in. And uh, as I was thinking about that, and oh, I, I have to go contact someone, get permission for them, a bit of a pain in the ass. I sort of looked, and look, guys, there's a billion videos here on YouTube. They're all like one minute long, and they just show demonstrations of all the desperation attacks. So here's my, my thing. Look, guys, I recommend you check those out. You can pause this video and just go type in FF6 desperation attacks if you'd like to see them. It is interesting. Most of the attacks are very, very short and quick, and they'll be over in a second, but it's kind of fun. And, you know, those videos all have very low views. It would, it would be cool to give them a little bit of viewership. So if you guys want to see them, I'm just going to say they're not my series, but... Trust me, it's very easy to find on YouTube. Second disappointment, and I really don't need to go on a big rant about this, is the Cursed Shield. Yeah, I haven't sat there on the original island for like three hours or whatever it was, just spamming encounters. I will keep the shield on Strago anyway. Maybe we will break the curse in the tower. We have a lot to do with Strago here. Um, but I haven't done that bit either. Sorry, everyone. Right, let's jump in on the story. Oh, we're already here. Weird. Did it actually save from my little uh, 
Phoenix grind thing there? Phoenix? A Phoenix cave grind? All right, we're going on in. So, uh, wow, I, um, I've done a little bit of reading ahead here. Nothing too spoilery, but uh, it sounds like there's a lot in this tower. It sounds like instead of it just being a dungeon, it's like a triple dungeon with like three required bosses, a few hidden bosses, a billion like enemy encounters that you might miss, then like three major bosses, then like a boss gauntlet, then a final boss. Uh, it, it's kind of nuts. <laughs> so I don't know how long we'll be sitting here for. Um, so here we get we get uh, three parties. I don't know whether in the GBA edition they bring this back and you get a triple party again in like the Soul Shrine or the Dragon's Den or something. Uh, but I think this is kind of a nice gimmick. Actually, this is one of my favorite mechanics about Six. And for all I just talked about desperation attacks becoming a big thing throughout the Golden Age, I don't really remember this being a thing that much in those games. Um, but So we kind of get to use nearly everyone except two. And unfortunately, you can probably guess this. I think I'm going to leave Gogo and Umaro behind because they basically have no dialogue, no stakes in the story whatsoever. But we'll see. Okay, so what's really important is Strago is in party one. Basically, each party is going to find a different boss. Um, well, they're going to find multiple bosses, but a, a big important boss. And Strago can learn a lore from one of them. But it's only the one in the leftmost party. Do you remember how I mentioned he already has his final law, Grand Delta? Well, there's there's another one which is kind of insane as well. We'll get to that when, when we can. So Strago has to be here in this team. I think I want Realm with him because that's nice. Now, to round these two out because they're both mages, I think it would be kind of cool to give them uh, someone physical maybe or something. So I'll give them the Dragoon Mog. Uh, I also, I have certain characters that I think are really strong, and I kind of want to keep them spread out so that each party has a bit of strength. So Terra is unbelievably strong. Terra seems to be able to carry anything with the whole quick double cast ultimate stuff. Um, so I have her. Also, Sets is a bit random, but is generally very good as well. So we'll have Sets in your team. That, that splits our power up a bit. Sabin is generally just strong, and I kind of want with his brother... So we'll have these two together in this team. There's a story. I am winging this, by the way. There's a story connection between Gao and Cyan, and this is the only team with two people left. Yeah, this is working. This is working. Oh, but that splits Locke and Celeste up. Um. Yeah. So we can't. We couldn't do that in theory. What do I care more about? Locke and Celeste together? I mean, Locke and Celeste kind of, they have this romance thing a little bit, but not too much. Okay, I'll put Shadow over... I'll put Shadow with Realm. There you go, that's their team. Now, who, who gets Celeste, who gets Locke? I think Celeste comes here, the Rune Knight, because it's a bit of magic. And uh, Locke comes over here. Oh my god, what just happened there? Oh, whoops. I managed to hit two keys at once, and we ended up going left and replacing Mog instead. So there you go. So those are my team. And sorry to Gogo, but you had a lot of time at the Colosseum. Sorry to Amaro, but you had some time at the Cultist Tower. And frankly, I just used you quite a lot. Um, I don't think that's totally it for them. I think there'll be something else coming up. But yeah, that, that's the decision I've made. I don't know uh, how similar this is to other people who've played the game. But let's run on in. Now, the other thing about this place as well, I mentioned it in the previous episode. Um... Oh, also, this scene here, again, if we hadn't recruited certain party members, Terra, I think, is the specific one, you get a different cutscene if you have or haven't got her. We actually saw the cutscene where we don't have her, because when we came here to get the fixed dice a few episodes ago. But, um, you know, there's, there's an alternate variation that I would assume most people see. So, there's that. The other thing, yeah, I mentioned the previous part, Holy. I think Holy is so we can press the L button at any point to swap between the parties. So cool. So party one with Strago is who I guess I'll start with. Um, so I don't necessarily want to do too much of that stuff. That's So I'll give Strago the Magus Rod. I don't know why Optimize didn't give that to him. Remember, we got this in the last part from one of the dragons. It's just ludicrously strong. Speaking of the dragons, yeah, we have them to deal with. Oh, also, I was going to keep the Cursed Shield on him. So I guess that defines what his gear is going to be here. It's going to be a ribbon. Here we go, of which we have two, and it's going to be a safety bit. The safety bit will protect us from the doom. Oh, no, 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 the lich ring protects us from the doom, because it, it somewhat makes us undead, but then the ribbons, 
Like, this is such a cool combo. I never really explained this properly. Like, he's kind of zombified with the Lich Ring, but the Ribbon protects him from it, which also protects him from the other statuses. But then the Doom means he gets the heal. This is such a cool combo. Um, and then I guess a circle. All right, so that's his build. So good job there, Stray Goat. Now for Realm, it's given her the Genji shield. By the way, there's some really OP gear uh, for both Celeste and Terra. We haven't seen yet. Also could have got the Colosseum, but we'll get in a chest here. So don't you guys worry about that. Um, and I'm thinking about that there because it's like female only gear, but it's like sexy gear. So Realm isn't allowed to wear it, obviously. Uh, so I was just thinking, what could be better than the Bemoth suit? There is something, but she doesn't get it. Um, so what else could we put on her? I re You know what I really like? I like these things that give us preemptive strikes, like the Gale hairpin. I really like this. Preemptive strikes feel so good because you just you just wipe the enemy and that's it. Beyond that, maybe she should have a hero's ring. Oh, we could give her the fake mustache, but it fails so often. I don't know. I'm going to go with the hero's ring instead. Oh, I'll, I'll tell you what we could do. Give her the memento ring. Because I actually think that's quite strong in certain bits here. A ring blessed by a departed mother's uh, love. So there you go. We'll go feel like the RP there with her. As for the Gladius that it gave her, is that really good? Holy Rod would be bad. Should we give her like the Gravity Rod? I don't know whether we've used it much. Oh, let's give her a mace because we don't see. Oh no, let's give her the Da Vinci Brush. That buffs her magic a little bit and her agility, which are both good stats. I'll do that. There you go. Okay, and then Mog should already be set up. Perfect. Shadow is not already set up. There, you can have the. No, I want you to have ninja stuff. Let's give him his itchy. Let's have him dual wielding, um, like instant death stuff, and so that means he's gonna have to have the Genji glove. There you go. The uh, you know I don't want the Gladius. Go with the Assassin's dagger, the itchy geki, and then over here, uh, let's give him the miracle shoes. I guess. I think this is gonna be one of our weakest teams, so I'm happy to use the better gear. Oh, do I actually have a second pair of miracle shoes? I'm not sure whether I do. Uh, no, I think they're already equipped with everyone else. Okay, you'll just get the Hermes sandals then. All right, there you go. So that's our team. We have Golem, Phantom, Quetzali, Ragnarok. Some people are learning some things, some people aren't. That's fine. Now, I really don't know where I'm going at all. I think this place is very complicated. We were here very briefly for a couple of chests, if you guys remember, such as this one down here. Uh, oh my god, I missed this one? The Hypno Crown. Okay. Do we already have a Hypno Crown? A crown that raises the success rate of the control command. Oh! Oh my god, that's amazing! Okay, so hold on. So, I could do Hypno Crown. And instead of the Gale Hairpin, I could do that with the fake mustache. So she gets control and has the crown together. Ah, I like that! Strike has so many laws you can learn here. This might actually be handy as well. Well, that's like a proper realm setup we have. I mean, aside from the Genji Shield. It's all like big iconic stuff for her there. Wow, that's that's nuts. Did not know that that gear was there. Okay, all right, first encounter. Let's see what we got. Ooh, a Ma great Malboro, great Bearmoth, and a Vector Lithos. Jesus Christ. Okay, so for laws, we could be spamming Grand Delta now. <gasps> I could put the Soul of the Master on him. No, nah, that's probably a bit too much micro, isn't it? We'll see. We'll just use like Osmos or something. Should we try and control the the Malboro and have it use Bad Breath? Oh god, the curse shield, and we're going to be doing this with Doom. That's such a silly idea, isn't it? Even this thing looks scary, because it looks like one of the dragons. Haymaker, 850 damage. It's a little bit scary. Yeah, no, we got control. Okay, Shadow, attack the Bemoth, because if we attack the Malboro, it will snap out of the control. Let's see what Realm can use. Can you use Bad Breath? You can! Nice! Uh, can I cast that? Will, will Strago learn Bad Breath? I would think he might be able to. I did not actually watch Grand Delta land there, either. Did it work out? Oh, I'm really liking the haste on Shadow there, because he's not going to be doing much. Oh, look, we imped him via Bad Breath. That's awesome. Uh, you know, I like. by the way, whenever I read about those dragons and different strategies on Wiki about different things that they could do, um, that you could do to fight them. Oh, my God, he's getting healed somehow now. Uh, it was always saying stuff like, oh, Shadow can throw this equipment. Shadow can throw this elemental thing. Shadow can throw this. You know, he is strong if you're using the throw command. It's just a bit, you know, tricky. There you go. Look, Shango did learn bad breath. What was I, what was I saying? Already, a bunch of uh, laws we're getting. And there are a lot in here. So that's actually... That says there's a chest there, but it's actually just a transition. 
Okay, so that conveyor belt goes up, so we need to go on the left one, which will go down. Head into this door here. Oh, exact same battle. I think I'll cut this one since you guys already saw it. Oh, nice. Look, look, interceptor go. Yeah, how much damage is he doing now? 1,800? I mean, it's okay. Oh, I love the idea that both Realm and Strago get that. Okay, Malboro is definitely weak to fight there. He took a lot more uh, damage. No, Shadow gets Hastesia. We could actually start casting that at the beginning of the turns as well, which will be nice. Strago is kind of crap in terms of Esper coverage. I've given him very few abilities. Arise, Strago. Arise, we need you. Um, Up here? Did we come all the way through here before? Was this where the fix died? Oh, yeah, I think we got this chest, and then that was it. So, it's all new now. So this, by the way, th this looks like a factory floor. A, a bunch of the different rooms are going to have very different themes. And I think... Oh, we got almost the same fight again here now. I think um, if you want to get the 100% bestiary achievement, you have to spend a long time in here. Are the dragons going to absorb the fire, though? Is that what they're doing? They have a mix of different resistances and absorptions. Let's see. I should have just grand doubted, frankly, but let's test it out. Okay. Um, yeah, so, like, in, in one of the factory rooms, there's this crazy-looking, like, car tank thing that you might want to see. The actual floor is so short that, for most players, you just skip through, and, um, and you're unlikely to get a single encounter in there. Uh, so, yeah, you know, keep an eye out for stuff like that. Uh, let's ground out. Do you know what I should have done? Try to stock up on as many ethers as possible, just because Osmo going to the effort of osmosing in the middle of these fights is kind of annoying. Wow, I can't believe Flare is cheaper than Faraga. That's amazing. I like that. Flare's always been a weird skill in Final Fantasy. It looks like fire damage, but it's not elemental. It's like, what's its niche? The idea that it's kind of a generic, slightly cheaper... Um... Oh, wow, we just got Ultima. Okay, well, I just bitched about you, Strago, but actually, you get an Ultima from Ragnarok's kind of amazing. Let's swap you over now to Carb... No, no, not Carb Encore. Let's do, let's do Bahama on you now. I mean, everyone, we could kind of swap around a bit. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's head on down. And we're in uncharted territory now. I'm just furiously looking at the mini-map here, <laughs> if I can get any in. Like, what's over here? This totally feels like there'd be a chest or something. I guess not. Oh, just a single one this time. Why does it say he's enemy four when there's only one guy on screen? That's weird, isn't it? Well, we're getting through the encounters. <laughs> Will he break the curse on the shield? That's going to be kind of a fun idea. Okay, Kefka's Tower B1 now. Why is this one light and lit up and flashing? It feels like if I can get to this staircase and come down, I can hit that button. So do I, I need to wait now, maybe, and swap parties? I feel like I might have to. I'm going to leave straight go there. Okay, new team. All right, who are we now? We're party two. We have Setsa. So here, you see this arrow, and it means that I can leave. I read on Wiki that there's a big difference in each game version, how exactly you leave. Like on mine, I would just interact with that and go out. But I think in one of the other versions, there's a crane that sweeps left to right, a bit like these spotlights are going all over the place. And you're supposed to like jump and grab the crane. The same crane is the exit point for all three characters. You just got to get the timing right. It sounds amazing. I, I, I guess that was one of the GBA things maybe or something. And they cut all that stuff out, obviously, again here. All oh, these conveyor belts aren't even on. Oh, I feel nervous because I haven't healed for a while. Oh my god, two Brachiosaurs, except no, not really. They're primeval dragons. Okay, so let's Phantom Rush. This is so easy to input. It's unreal because the, the diagonals don't actually matter. Oh, Celeste doesn't have a sword equipped. Does Celeste have anything equipped? I might have not put anything on her. Sorry, Celeste. I'll fix that in a second. No, let's not. How about we don't Quake or Tornado? <laughs> I mean, we could start with Float on. And we could start spamming Quake. You're actually going to see there's a very similar strategy to all of that with the final Esper coming up in a minute. Uh, I, I don't know. I guess just Thundaga. And then here we are going to continue with the Chainsaw Spam versus random mobs. And uh, the Drill Spam against any bosses we might find. Yeah, actually, I might just Drill Spam. I think these guys are going to be immune to death effects a lot. Oh my god, Setsu did a lot of damage there. We got a lot of high rolls. Yeah, I think I'll just do uh, Chainsaw anyway because... Oh, there we go. The Minerva Bustier. 
So there is a strategy with this game. You know how we came in and got the fixed dice? What a lot of people do is they rush to Mog. They get Mog. And then they get his, like, Moogle Light, his Moogle Charm item, which means you can have no encounters. And then they come in here and go on an item run. You just run around in here with no encounters. You're perfectly safe. You can get items like this and the fixed dice. So if you're, like, a super low level run, that's, that's a thing that you might be doing. So speaking about equipping Celeste, if I hit optimal, it will put the Minerva Bustier on her. A breastplate that blocks damage from multiple elements provides a 25% bonus to maximum MP. So, um, yeah, this is her strongest defensive thing in the game. Terra can also wear it. Uh, but Terra's got... Terra, you got more than enough. What else should we give her here? Um, have we got another spare ribbon? We gotta put the ribbon on the lady. There you go. And I guess Hermes sandals or something. Her damage could obviously be a bit higher, but this is kind of nice. Oh, there you go. She's got the ultimate weapon as well, um, which means she'll get Runic back. Speaking about weird challenge runs, another thing that I just wanted to... I've, I've alluded to it a few times. So we can go up or downstairs. Let's go upstairs, I guess. Um... Another thing that uh, people do is they do come in here. Uh, this is just a pinwheel, you know, which we could have been upgrading and stuff at the, the Coliseum. Oh, my God. Three Malboros. Actually, I'm kind of not scared of them at all. I'm going to stick on Phantom Rush instead of swapping to Rising Phoenix here. Just because... I think s this will do the AoE and then Setsu will finish them off. So, I think all I have to do here is hit Q and they're just going to go for it. So, um... Yeah, uh, if you come in here with just Setsa, Celeste, and Sabin, those are the only three characters you need in the world of Ruin. That's it. There we go. We got instant death that time. Um, if you come in here with those three, uh, no, not Sabin, Edgar, the other brother. Wow, we just one-shot those Malboros, I now realize. How do I get in that doorway on the left? It's called the CES Challenge, or a CES Run. So if you're ever reading about FF6 after this playthrough is over, or you're thinking about playing it yourself, we're in a toilet. What on earth? Can we come out down here? Oh, shit. I think this is one of the bosses. Yeah, CES is uh, is a thing. Oh, my God. We're already in a pretty dramatic place. Okay, so there are optional bosses here. I think this is one of them. We can skip it. Basically, if you guys remember, this is where we saw Kefka was in jail before. God, that bit of the story was so good. Um, and now there's a monster where he was in jail. Uh, so let's just run in. I guess I've got a good team for dealing with it. And let's see what we got here. I'm going to pause the fight as soon as it starts, just so that I know exactly who it is. I am the one known as Ultima. Forged an eternity ago. I was placed here. And then forgotten in the mists of time. Long have I pondered what I should do. Long, long have I pondered. But now it seems that I have an answer. Not that. Oh, and he glows after the dialogue. He, he powered up, I guess. And I guess his answer is he's going to try and fight us. Okay, Blizzaga. And oh my god, it one-shot Edgar. Jesus. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> I was feeling confident until that. Uh, let's... Do we have a rise on Celeste? No, we don't. Ugh, such B team. Okay, uh, let's let's do raise. And then let's see what we got. So, this is Ultima question mark. So that's all fancy called cool dialogue. It's also totally generic, has absolutely no hooks with the existing story. Why is this character standing where Kefka was? Is it some kind of a, a monster forged by Espers in the previous war or something? That's all yours to speculate, I guess, because they keep it totally generic here. There is a lot to talk about here, though, with him. Um, first of all, the Ultima thing. Remember the Floating Continent? We actually already fought Ultima the monster. Uh, this is now, like, Tier 2 of Ultima, the Ultima Buster. Uh, which is funny, because in most Final Fantasy games, if you're going to have an Ultima, and then like a higher tier Ultima in the late game, it's usually the Ultima weapon the enemy, and then the Omega weapon enemy. This guy could easily have been the Omega weapon, but I don't know whether like that staple of the franchise was established yet. Um, so they call him Ultima Buster here instead. Funnily enough, again, back to the goddamn GBA edition, when they released it on Game Boy Advance, they saw this and they were like, well, why wasn't this thing called Ultima? So in GBA, they, they added an... Sorry, well, they said, why isn't this thing called Omega? 
so in GBA, they added Omega as well. Like, there's Ultima, Ultima Buster, and Omega uh, out in that edition in, like, one of the later dungeons, which is kind of cool. And Omega is, like, one of the craziest, like, most badass things in the game. This also, remember this whole thing about this mistranslation where they call it Atma weapon? This is what was called Atma. So aside from that, I don't really have much more trivia, except that I know one of his mechanics. So let's see how, how it goes. Come on, Setzel. Oh, oh my god, he's doing good damage. You got a 999 in there. Counter 4172, Phantom Rush. Pretty happy with that. We should have a chainsaw going, but I think he's going to drill, and I think he's going to miss. Oh my god, no, we're queuing raises. No, when will I learn? When will I learn? Okay, turn it off. I didn't queue it already. I turned it off. Oh, she's already casting. Shit, I missed my window. Um, so when he gets low on health, he starts acting like, oh, no, no, we're not really casting. Okay, down to drill. Severe damage. Oh, my God, it's 8k. Oh, shit, Quake, I think we're dead. I really think we're dead. Oh, wait, 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 oh, Celeste. Okay, oh, my God, it queued and it actually worked. That worked out for us. That's awesome. Uh, we can queue that one. That's fine. All right, stop. Do some damage now. You you just learned Ultima, didn't you? What, didn't I say you just learned Ultima? Someone did. Oh, he's dead. Okay, so basically, when he gets low on health, he acts like a bomb. You know, as in, like, he's charging up, and if he takes a hit, he's, like, charging more. And if he takes a hit, he's charging more. And then I think he casts Ultima on you or something, and we all know how deadly that is. Um, oh, there we go. So he's, he's destroyed. Nice. What did that do? That gave us a save point? Weird. I mean, I'll take advantage of it. Shall we tent on it as well, I suppose? Whose tent haven't we seen? We're currently on set, so I think we've seen his. What about Edgar's tent? We're going to get that tent trivia in the series here, guys. No, 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 no! Oh, I'm not going to talk about it. All right, look, I've clearly, <laughs> I've clearly had issues keying around in this. Oh! Oh, it's not that bad. We made progress. We killed a boss. <laughs> Shit. All right. I'll see you guys in a second. We don't even need to tent now. It will have fully healed everyone. Oh, I've got to figure out the whole teams again and everything. Okay, we're back. I'm going to be totally honest. I just used no encounters to get back down here. <laughs> I, in fact, I was using it in the Phoenix Cave at the start. Oh, so sneaky. Do you know what? I've also been kind of sneaky about with it. Can I just verify we are back up and healed you? Yeah. Yeah, we are. Oh, do you know what? Um, if Sabin has finished Raiden, I definitely want to move that to someone else because Raiden is badass. And uh, teaching people quick is a very good idea. In fact, oh my god, T oh my god, Seth already knows quick. We should quick double dice then. Why haven't we been doing that? All right, well, we can do that. Uh, and then I guess Celeste doesn't have something as well. So what has she got left to learn? She's got quick as well. I really should just use more quick. As long as the MP's alright. I guess we'll just give her Carbuncle, Ruby Light. We could cast Reflect at the start of a team or so, uh, the start of a fight or something. So, uh, yeah, the other thing I've been kind of sneaky about is, you know, I've got this rule with my LPs at the moment. Oh my god, we can't go back. Uh, where I'm not... Like, I'm supposed to finish the whole project before I start uploading it. And I've broken that rule. I actually put the first episode of this series up. Well, not the first episode. The first episode up since the break. Um... Here as I'm recording the finale. <laughs> so, uh, tee hee. Uh, all right, what have we got here? I do not remember anyone looking. Oh, the Mood Sood. Oh, I think he's kind of a rare enemy as well, actually. The Mood Sood. Huh. Uh, well, what do we want to do? I guess let, let's try a quick combo, shall we? See, it's 99 MP for quick. All right, that's what balances quick. That's like what balances quick hit in 10 as well, actually. Uh, 99 MP. I actually can't afford it then because she only has 100. Oh my god, those quick double cast ultimate turns, they are so expensive. That's how important the Celestriad is. Well, I guess with that in mind, let's Osmos and get some of her MP back. Let's hit Q for everyone else. We're just going to be careful that she doesn't keep spamming that. Actually, to be honest, she could use it twice in a row there because it didn't put her all the way back up to max. Well, this guy's pretty tanky, eh? Because that was a lot of good hits. Will he really survive this barrage? That's, that was a huge barrage. Oh my god. Wow, this team's uh, pretty goddamn strong, actually. Nice. All right, Celeste gets a level. I feel like I've neglected Celeste a little bit in these past couple of episodes. She did have a real lot of time in the spotlight, though, as the character for the World of Ruin, you know. She's responsible for all of this. Oh, my God, this factory place looks cool. Ooh, there's multiple paths. Let's go... Oh, can I even go up there? Maybe we just have to interact. 
Oh, these junk things. Okay. Um, I'm going to assume they're weak to thunder. Let's AoE it. These enemies usually, when they die, they go away and, like, something new comes down and replaces them, right? Oh, well, nothing happened that time. Well, we just destroyed them. Okay, we hit E. We can climb into the pipe. Is this the edge of the screen? It is. Oh, and that's what takes us there, sneaky. You know, in a way, I think some players will have a moment like that and they'll say, oh, I've been punished there. But no, no, no. Like, I now know what that... That, that room is for. I now know like why that exit exists, so I feel good. What are these things? Movers. Well, let's just do the Thundaga again. Let's see what we got. Oh my god, I'm really happy I brought Sensor with us for the Ultima thing. Oh, we get Magicite shards from them. Damn. Obviously, this is unlocking just a ton of stuff at the Velt. Which I think a lot of players won't take advantage of because, you know, you're at the end now. But again, that's again where the GBA is good. Because remember, the GBA is going to allow us... Thunder seems good again. Um, the, the GBA edition would allow us to do all of this and then leave. I mean, we could te technically still leave at this point as well. But even after a bunch of the bosses... Sets against Holy, you're not going to be casting that, mate. Sorry. But that's probably a sign that you've finished the Esper. And it is. Let's give you Siren. I mean, do, do, do I bother with this? Because... And then we're going to be taking advantage of many of these, these things. At this point, really, they should just have the, the one equipped for the stats that I want them to have. But hey. Okay, so we don't go through that pipe. We go through this pipe. You know, if I think it thought really logically about it as well, I might have been able to predict that that pipe would take me out in the other place. Oh, we get another force shield. Wait, hold on. Was it the force armor we were looking at before? Is this our first force shield? Is it? Is nobody wearing one of these? No, no, no. We have a force shield just on someone else already. I'll probably equip that, though. Um, instead of the uh, crystal shield. In fact, it might do it with optimal. No, it didn't. But I'm going to do it regardless. Force shield plus Minerva Bustier. She's she's taken a lot of reduced damage there. Plus auto haste plus a ribbon. It's a nice build. Um, we can't do... We can't go down there. So we have to go to the other one. We got these three again. Let's see how this team deals with these three, shall we? Well, Setsa, that was one of his lowest attacks for a long time. Get the Haymaker. That's probably a good thing to Phantom Rush, I think, because they seem quite squishy. That really should be a fire attack, not a thunder one, so we'll swap that. Infernal Kiss, Auto Death. Ooh, scary stuff. Uh, no, no, no. I'm just going to leave Sabin dead. It feels far more comfortable to res out of combat where it's not spending turns, it's not watching the animation, all that. You have a rise, right? Yeah, you do. And all you do is physically attack, so there you go. Alright, down we come here. We get another branch, another split. Hmm. Actually, a three-way split. What if I come up? Oh, okay, so we get a chest. Oh my god, and the force armor there. We should give that to someone. Setzer, I guess. Setzer, you can have it. That seems pretty cool. One of the most carbal fights I think we're ever going to see. That's really weird, actually. It seemed like it was trying to trigger the death animation three times in a row. Okay, so left or right? I'm going to go left. Ah, we found the button. Nice. Hello, stray goat. Oh, the button doesn't do anything. I really thought it was going to. You get a chest, though. Oh, there's another, another ribbon. Wow. Okay, but what do I want to swap? You are not using the Miracle Shoes or the thing. Oh my god, Edgar has nothing equipped. Alright, you can have the ribbon. This is awful. This is all because of that moment in the previous part where it unequipped everything on everyone. Holy shit, dude. I'm so sorry. No wonder he's been randomly getting beaten up. Here, I will give you the growth egg. Actually, let's give him... Do you know what we haven't done for ages? Let's give him a gauntlet. So he's now dual wielding the Zanetsukun. I think that's quite fun. There you go, with a ribbon. So you have fun with that. Since we don't really since we haven't made him a dragoon. Okay, cool. So I can stand on this and it moves that. And it stays permanently moved. So I can just leave again now, right? I'm amazed that it's weird. It's like they telegraphed to me that there was something for me to activate in this room, but in a weird way. <laughs> I don't know. Or I'm crazy. Let's try... We could go to Terra's team now. Let's try coming down here first. Oh, no, this doesn't really make any sense. Oh, my God, where are we now? Oh, is this, like, near the end? 
It's like three broken vats. This is where the Warring Triad were in, right? Okay, hold on. I want to I want to see what's in this room first. Cuz if it's just a little treasure room, this must be how these guys advance, surely. Oh my god, we're in a throne room. Oh, we got another one of the dragons. Wow, party 2 is getting the big uh, the big fights. Okay, so remember, two of the remaining dragons are in here. I guess there's nothing for it. For it. Let's just try it out. I don't know which one this is until we get in. Obviously, the overworld sprite doesn't mean anything. As soon as I know which one it is, I'll give you the trivia. Oh, here we go. It's the gold dragon. Nice. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, well, it says he's not going to one-shot that, is he? <laughs> I hope not. I was just trying to pause. All right. Okay, so the gold dragon. Um, this is the one, as you've already seen, does lightning damage. Therefore, if you like equip thunder shields and stuff, you'll do very well. Uh, this is actually one of the easiest dragons in the game. You remember I said that the ice, the, like the blue dragon, the one up at Nash, was like really easy. I think this one's even easier than that. This one's super, super, super simple. Um, literally, uh, so most dragons, right, they have their element, but then they have like an additional attack that is not that element. So if you equip purely lightning resist, he has something else he can do. Except this guy doesn't even have that. So seriously, you do lightning absorption or these force armors and force shields that cut the elemental damage down massively like you just saw. Uh, he's just never going to win. It really is a free win. You can also um, use water damage on him and destroy him. Now if I had Mog in my team or if we had Edgar as our uh, Dragoon. Um, one of the, the spears is called a trident and it's water damage. So you could go boom, boom, boom with like his weakness with the trident, which would just be incredibly, incredibly strong. Another strategy is hit. So remember, they're all weak to a different status. This guy's status is berserk. So if you berserk him, he's just going to physically attack you. You combo that with phantom. It will be like when we were at Mount Zozo. Again, you're invulnerable because he can't do anything anymore. Uh, so there's a lot of ways to this fight. And I think he's kind of squishy at the same time as well. So let's just take him out. I'll remind you guys as well at this point. Oh, no, we don't have to do that. We could just hit Q. Um, oh, actually, is she going to use Thunder on him and heal him? She might. I'll remind you guys as well at this point that uh, there is... So there's the eight dragons. There was a ninth in the... No, she's using fire. There is a ninth one in the game's code. Wouldn't it be amazing if we lose this now, after I just said all of that? Uh, the Kaiser Dragon. You know, people thought it came from the Dinosaur Forest and all that. that um, and then the GBA Edition actually properly added it. So in the GBA Edition, you've got... The Kaiser Dragon is like one of the really ultimate crazy super bosses. Because basically, you, you beat all these dragons, you go to a new dungeon where they all return, and the Kaiser's the final one. And also, it has Omega. Um, and they're both just like, like super, super, super deadly. Anyway, so there you go. So we get Ultima on Sabin, which again, we're probably not going to use. The Crystal Orb is the item this time. One dragon remaining. Oh, imagine if you were just winging it through this game, spending hours and hours and hours uh, every day after work, after school. And you don't know where that last one is, but you, you've been slowly counting down. You'd be feeling so good. A powerful magic orb that holds a mysterious, a mysterious power. Boost ma maximum MP by 50%. Does it give me any other stats? To be honest, it would be alright on Celeste at the moment. I'm going to do it instead of the ribbon. Wait, hold on. Yeah, okay, it is equipment. Yeah, it doesn't give her any stats. This is kind of like half MP cost. But not really, right? I mean, this is a classic thing in RPGs. If you can get... If you can double your defense and half the damage you're taking, it's much better than doubling your HP. Same thing with MP, because it, it costs so much in terms of ethers and osmoses and stuff to restore. But if you just, if you create a wall in the first place or just cut costs, it's always better. Um, kind of a very, very big thing that I'm thinking about a lot at the moment as I play a hell of a lot of Guild Wars 1 these days. Uh, where everybody's kind of realized the power of armor instead of HP and stuff. Anyway, um... Should we heal? I think we probably should. And let's do it with Celeste. The idea being you only need to do one or two casts, maybe. I don't know. Alright, so now where the hell are we going? So yeah, that's two of the optional bosses done already. I'm quite impressed and happy with that. We've still gone everywhere. Oh, f Jesus, there's a lot of ways we can go now. Oh, no, but there's not. Cause that's blocked off. Okay. So it looks like we probably need... I'm really nervous about this four-ton weight above my head. Oh, I'm not nervous. We need to get up there and drop the weight to weigh this down. All right, prediction. 
Team three is going to knock this onto this, which is going to open this door, which is going to let uh, these guys go through. Because the color is the color kit scheme is similar. And then once these guys go through, they can hit this, which... No, I don't know. I don't know how that bit works. All right, I think, I think we have to stop with these guys now. I think that's as far as they can go. So team three, what items will you find? Woohoo! What enemies will you face? Probably these same things. This is cool. I was looking for Malboy. Oh, we get the preemptive strike. Oh my god, yeah, we get terror this time. <laughs> okay, I guess let's just get double ultimates going. I'm not even going to worry about quick here. I love how I spent the whole game wanting Malboros, and then they feature so heavily in the final bit. Uh, Gao, you can start raging as... Should we do the IO? The IO might be fun for a while. Lock, I think I'm just going to have you attacking and thus stealing. Or we could we could make him mug, actually. Should we put some stuff on to make him mug? Why is Bushido not available? I think Cyan doesn't have any anything equipped. We're going to have to fix that. <laughs> Not that it matters. Terra's going to just destroy everything. Hold on. Yeah, Cyan, equip some stuff so that you can start Bushidoing. What do we want to put on you? Should we give him the Knight's Code? I love these. And we're not going to get much more chance. Here we go. The Knight's Code. He's a knight. He'll defend critically wounded allies. We could give him the counter thing as well if we really wanted. I think I'll go with a ribbon though instead. And then Locke also has nothing equipped anymore. Let's give him Mug. So the Brigand's Glove. And then let's give him a Genji Glove so he's dual wielding. And then let's give him a Thief's Knife. So remember, the Thief's Knife is, is going to attack with a chance to steal. And then again, because it's the Brigand's Glove. I mean, this would be a cool Master Scroll setup as well. Let's do the Gladius. I should have done a second Thief's Knife at the Colosseum, so he could have two. Eh, the damage might be a bit low, but whatever. All right, cool. Um, it really weirds me out that some of these conveyor belts just aren't on. I guess it doesn't really matter. Red Cap. What do we get here? Oh, we've already had a red cap. Oh, yeah, 25% bonus to maximum HP. Uh, I just saw that merit award there, and I'm wondering if there's anything we could do build-wise with that, but I don't think so. So we've got a choice. I, I'm just going to do the first door. I feel like whenever you're given a branch, if your instinct is the first door, it's the most likely one to be the dead end. Oh, nice. We get a side attack. Uh, I'm going to skip Terra here just so that I can queue. Should we just try Oblivion spamming? I forgot how cool Cyan got. And then we'll do Mug there. And then and then we can queue that. That's all. Oh my god, we got a teleport stone. Nice. Oh, he healed on that one. That's not good. Well, there's an Ultima. <laughs> They're all dead. Wait, they have less than 999 HP. Ugh, okay. There's a lot of transition icons there, and I don't know why. Okay, this is feeling very much like the correct way to go. So let's try the other door. My theory was wrong. It won't always be correct. Nice. We get another preemptive strike. Here's Flare Star. Now remember, that will do more damage when there's only one target on screen. I believe anyway. And it didn't seem to hit very hard there. But its damage is also based on the enemy's level. So since he's a bit weak, you know, it's not going to be too good. I really want that chest on the left. Let's be a way for us to get it. Oh, in fact, this probably is the way to get it right. Oh, no, no, no. We're somewhere completely different. Oh, God, this area is complicated. A new hero's ring. That's our third one. Nice. Can I hit that switch? No. Can I do anything in this room? It doesn't look like there's any exits. Fortis. Oh, we stole a drill from it. Nice. Oh, I mean, these guys just have got no chance. You know, when I... Oh, oh, there is a way out. When I Let's Played 10, I did a thing where I, like, created a split save file before I got too overpowered. Oh, we're in this room now. Well, what about this pipe? That will probably take me to the chest. I would hope, if there's any logic to all this. Oh, nice. There's, like, a mini screen in the middle. Oh, no, there's no... I'm just so confused. Um, I probably could have done that in this game as well, the whole split save file thing, so then you return to, like, weaker characters, so you're not so OP for the end. But I don't know why I'm saying all this. I have no idea how bad some of these bosses coming up are going to be. Flare cast if they were, if their level was divisible by four, and a bunch of us are, apparently. That's quite crazy. You get the jewel armor and the death machines. 
Lock's a bit underwhelming here, but items are fun. That would have been a really good flare star there, gal. Oh, it's nice to get hit by 2k and survive. Oh, there you go. We're just kind of waiting for Terra to do her thing. We should really give her haste. And no fears about healing on her out of combat. Um, I got no idea here now. I really don't know how we're going to get over to that thing. Let's just try. So we'll move back up. These little trans... I was talking about Little Big Adventure quite a lot when we were in environments like this before. But that thing where you go on a conveyor belt and then you're in a mini screen and then you go to the next is very similar to that game. That kind of stuff happens all the time in that game. And I find it so ambient. Gamma! How, how, how well do you fare against Ultima Gamma and Flare Star? Look at all these fancy-ass moves we're using. And then there's, there's Locke doing this. <laughs> Oh, he's alive! He survived! Well, what about Oblivion? Alright, I might change Oblivion to Tempest. They're obviously going to be resisting it. He's still alive! Oh, and now he's dead. I guess that was like a Bemoth. I got really scared there. I was like, oh, big scary AoE. I don't know how strong it's going to be. And he survived a bunch of abilities. Is this some kind of like super enemy that, you know, not, not necessarily a boss, but... Oh, we've already got that chest. Hold on, were we here before? Whoa, what is... Oh, God. We have another boss. Oh, Ketu, Rahu, and Inferno. Yeah, so I've I've taken some notes here. Uh, he's a cool design, isn't he? Well, um, I guess maybe it was just an extra boss, more enemy art. They, didn't, they, they wanted an idea for. Basically, you've got the guy in the middle and then the two arms. And you just hit the arms. This looks like a fairly basic fight. Uh, you know, we're, we're not going to have to worry about it too much here. There you go, see. Uh, this thing appears only in one other Final Fantasy game ever. And it's one of the MMOs. Oh my god, I say that, but he did a lot of damage. Oh my god, did Oblivion land? No, I need to change that. Oh, we get an ice shield. That's pretty good. And a crit. That's also pretty good. Uh, yeah, this appears in one other game. It's one of the MMOs. It's in 14. At like level 69, there's a dungeon. Castrum, Albania. And he's one of the bosses. And he has the two little arms. The Rahu thing and whatever. They really reference almost everything in that goddamn game. It's crazy. Alright, let's do a 1 MP Arise for Gao. Nice. And then let's do a Kiraga. Extra nice. Yeah, I guess he just descended on us a little bit like a spider or something. Why is that chest already open? Because I was definitely never here. That's very odd. Is it a trick? Should I have gone and interacted with it anyway? Oh, well, now where the hell are we? Okay, this convey is not working. There's another chest there. All right, as you get, uh, I, I calm down seeing these fights now. All right, let's go to Bushido Tempest. Takes a while for that animation to trigger, you know, but I like multi hits. Cheeky little level again. Oh, there we go. We get it. Cool. Why do I ever panic? Ah, we get another Mega Elixir. Ha <laughs> ha! I cannot believe I spent so long trying to cast stop on those starving enemies. There was a Mega Elixir here anyway. So yeah, we could go back and fight Siegfried again if you guys would like. Oh, imagine if Siegfried was a hidden character. This is very weird. It just made the whole place shake to interact with the chest. And this just takes us back up to... Oh, no, no, there was a chest in the middle. Oh, wouldn't it be cool if you can beat Siegfried at the Colosseum and he'll join you as well? The Rainbow Brush. That sounds like a good weapon for Realm. Oh, by the way, where we just fought that boss a second ago, in that one specific little room is one of the weird rare random encounters if you're trying to max your best hero out. It's a creature called the Prometheus. And you've really got to run around in that room for a while to see it. And it only appears there in this entire area, this entire dungeon. Um, so yeah, there's a few little examples of that. I made a little note for them, note of that. Oh, we get a landworm. Oh, I think this is another rare one, actually. Because this room's really tiny. I'm sure I read about that. Basically, I was looking at different details about the tower. And I kept seeing, like, oh, there's a rare enemy here. There's a and at first, I was making note of all the rare enemies. Thinking, oh, that'll be some good trivia for people. And then it got to the point where I'd, like, listed four or five of them. And I thought, you know what? <laughs> it's just generic info at this point. There's rare stuff in some of these screens. That screen's very short, so someone makes sense to me. Ah, so we get another similar-looking room with another one of the dragons. Here we go. So this will be the final one, guys. That means we're about to see some cool stuff. All right, the final sealed dragon. 
So what does this mean? Does Kefka have it in cahoots with him? Because a couple of them are there with him? Or is it just that this whole tower is a massive amalgamation of crazy stuff, so it happens to be some, some of the dragons are lingering around in here? Uh, what does that mean? This must be the Skull Dragon then, right? This must be it. Yeah, here we go. The Skull Dragon. Now, we've seen this a lot. It's just recolored, obviously, right? Let's see how Io does against this thing. So, his gimmick, you already saw it there. He just cast, um, what was it, Disaster, I think? He put Doom there on Gal. Everything this guy does is statuses. He's like the Malboro Dragon, which is a very cool idea. His main, and he's immune to all stats. Everyone else has, like, that one stat they're vulnerable to. I think this guy is just safe from them all, so that's, like, his gimmick. Um, so he's a little bit scary because of Doom and whatever, but you can just put ribbons on. And at this point, as you can see, I think we've got like four ribbons. Ah, oh, he's dead already. I mean, and that was Locke that did that. Uh, so yeah, ribbons will keep you safe. Another strategy if you're low level is you can drain his MP2. And in fact, in the GBA rematch in the dungeon later, uh, that's how you have to kill him. Like some of his like mechanics, like dummied mechanics that don't actually appear in the game. It was this whole MP drain thing. That's how you're meant to kill him. We get the muscle belt. Don't we already have a muscle belt? All eight, oh god. All eight, I'm gonna have to remember we got that muscle belt because there's a lot to talk about here. All eight dragons have been defeated. Now remember what that guy in Albrook said? That when all are defeated, the one shall rise. What's gonna happen, guys? Another boss? The eightfold seal is broken. Obtain the Crusader Manage Manage Site. <laughs> I think with the red flash and everything there, I really think there could have been another boss. Um and given like just the random boss we fought a second ago and stuff, you'd think that they they would do something like that, but they don't. So no matter where you are in the world, when you kill the last dragon, you just get an Esper straight up. You get Crusader. This is the final Esper of the game. And there, as you can see, Magicite Completionist, we obtained all the Magicite. Uh, Magicite is very cool, obviously. So first, real quick here, the Muscle Belt. A, a belt worn by martial artists, boosts your maximum HP by 50%. Pretty cool. Thematic for maybe Sabin, I don't know. Um, so let's talk about uh, this Esper, shall we? He's all the way down here. He's actually before Raiden, which is kind of wild. Did they think that the Raiden secret switch thing was that intense and insane? A secret in a secret kind of thing? That he's the final Esper? This is really the final Esper. Crusader. Now, in the very next game, like, I always think of the final Esper there, um, or summon there, as the Knights of the Round, which kind of have this big, like, knightly theme going on as well here. So, uh, Crusader. Now, this guy's a mix, a, a mixed bag. Um, you can see his ability is called Cleansing. I guess let's use that. I'm just going to show you what it does, and then we'll and we'll see the animation, and we'll go from there. So here's lock, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this screen, which will save. It will auto save. We'll go back into this screen with the the worm that's easy to miss. There you go, the land worm. We'll skip to lock's turn. See how much damage magnitude eight does? Not too much. And we'll cast Crusader. So it's 96 MP. It's called Cleansing. The final Esper, the final summon move, greatly damages all enemies and allies. Ah, oh, it's like Tornado and Quake again. That's why I'm talking about the autosave. So here we go. Now, people bag on this ability a lot. They basically say it's useless. So here you go. We get fire. We get three mobs. So basically, Crusader, I think there's like this idea that it's like part of the power of the Warring Triad or something. And look at that! Look at that! It just deleted, it just destroyed a bunch of us! So, um... And it didn't even do much damage to him! So you could be doing that, or you could be casting Ultima! Do you know what I've just realised we could do here as well, actually? If I fix this issue that I uh, wrote, uh, wrote, uh, brought up, that everyone's dead there. Except Terra, that's insane. Uh, let's, let's take, I keep having Phoenix on Terra, thinking, oh, I can show that off at some point. And then I'm not using it. There's her final Esper there. Uh, so let's go. Let's give Cyan Phoenix now. 
and we'll we'll muddle our way through this so we can see the Phoenix animation. So let's get this again with Crusader here. Let's cast it one more time. So this really isn't that useful. Um just because it hits you, and I don't think there's really any great ways of mitigating it either. Wait, you have Phoenix. Locke has Crusader. Uh, so it's not that great. Now, as for the animation, yeah, it kind of looks like the Warring Triad, right? Um, in the Ultima Ultimania for the 20th anniversary, okay, so actually quite recent for this game, they say, and I guess it's therefore canon now, that these three creatures here are like fragments of the Warring Triad or whatever. Oh, is he going to be dead from the magnitude? I think probably, which means... Yeah, okay, so what we do is we dual cast a rise. One on there. One on there. Leave Gal dead, and that will let us see the Phoenix animation. So, um, yeah, in the Ultimania, they say it is like Powers of the Warring Triad. The thing is, that Crusader animation, the things that you just saw in that little thing, they don't even look like the Warring Triad. They're just like... Uh, what, are they a predecessor Warring Triad? I don't know. Um... Kind of a weird one. All right, so now Cyan, Phoenix. Here we go. This is what it looks like to have Phoenix res an ally. Flames of Rebirth. Don't you? Don't you guys say I didn't put any? That's a really cool animation. I love how golden and incredible that looked. Don't you guys say that I didn't put any effort in? Because look, there it is. Uh, we we now I think at that point we've seen every single summon animation in the game, which is kind of awesome. So yeah, just to extend some thoughts on that thing where the Crusader animation looks a bit like the Warring Triad. I don't know, uh, people kind of discount the thing from the 20th and of uh, Ultimania because they don't really look like it. Because the summon is re re referred to as one entity. The Warring Triad is ultimately referred to as three. So, and what's the deal there? Then we're drawing a connection between the eight dragons and the Warring tri tri Triad. Which maybe makes sense since the eight dragons got released once the Warring Triad were destabilized again. But I don't know whether it really makes any sense. The only other thing that I'll, I'll go as far as to say is the theme with this Esper. With that big ability, it hits enemies and allies. You're also going to see his the magic he teaches you hits enemies and allies. Uh, that's kind of like a hostile big wipe thing, you know, it's called the cleansing, which feels a bit like what the Warring Triad did to the world, you know, they cleansed it, they destroyed it, they hit enemies and allies, so I don't know, there you have it. Uh, so yeah, there you go, that's his active. Now, of course, that's not everything to talk about, there is also the spells that he gives us, the stats that he gives us, and unfortunately... I mean, it's a bit like the Knights of the Round thing. Knights of the Round seem really good, but the animation test takes so long. Unfortunately, here, it's a little bit lackluster again, and I'll show you why. First of all, at level up, you get 50% MP, which is a big, you know, a big amount of MP. Don't get me wrong. Um, like, uh, the value seems big, but as we've established a billion times in the playthrough, it's not really even that useful. Um, you'd rather give them other raw stats, or, or you're going to be on one MP cost anyway. I've really noticed a thing about this game... Uh, it extends to the story where magic is like this big special thing and I think it's because it was true throughout all the pixel games or a lot of the pixel games Magic is like a big deal and I think they come at it from a design standpoint and, and a default view that magic is badass and amazing All the end game gear is about cutting magic and resistances The characters that can use magic by default are super strong like magic 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 So then they give you this perk at the end which is all about MP I think that probably seemed really strong to them when you get to some of the later games Magicians really start falling off and the nerf started coming in. So like if you've seen the end of my 10 LP, like you take a character like Lulu, she is one of the weakest and you know it tends to be the physical hitters that, en that end up being better in the end. But 6 is still kind of deep in that era I think where they treat magic, mechanics and story with like this huge amount of reverence that they don't quite understand. You know it is OP in this game, it definitely is because of 1 MP cost and double cast. You take those away, maybe this perk looks a bit better. So, unfortunately for the big ultimate thing, I mean, I wouldn't love this if this was like a celestial thing where it's like you get a bunch of every single stat at once or something, but only plus one instead of plus three or something. I don't know. So, not too good there. Um, I mean, you got to remember, at launch six, that's it. You've done the final end game. Well, why not give us a good reward? For spells, he gives us Meteor, which we've obviously already learned and we've talked a little bit about. But his new exclusive um, spell here is called Meltdown. Engulfs all enemies and allies in an ultra hot flame, ignores magic defense. So, the only way that this is going to be really good is if it hits harder than Ultima. 
frankly. Now remember, you if you if you are if you have Ultima the spell, it's because you've gone for Ragnarok the summon instead of the sword. So you could in theory be on this run without Ultima. Um and in that case, maybe Meltdown looks okay. But it actually does less damage than Ultima. So it, it, it's kind of not that good. There's also this problem, right? Which is... So Ultra Hot Flame. So what you could do is you, you could say, Ah, oh, this ability is fire damage. So all I have to do is equip a bunch of gear that absorbs fire damage. And remember, that might muscle in on other gear you'd rather be wearing. But if you do that, if you, put, if you go to the extent of giving everyone fire absorption... Then when you cast it, you're doing a bunch of damage and healing the entire team at once. Now that sounds a little bit better, except this actually does not just fire damage, it does wind damage too. So if you want to pull that strat off, you need very specific gear to be able to nullify both of those damage types. And at that point, you know, it's just kind of a big compromise and it's kind of annoying. So I think there are meltdown strats and at that point, you know, like... Like, you can get this to do 999 damage pretty easily. So then you are healing the entire team and damaging the enemy. But, I don't know. I mean, you compare this to, like, using Quake, right? You can pre-cast Float before the fight, and then you could just spam Quake. And avoid all of the incoming damage of that. Meltdown's got all these other hoops to jump through. There are two other cool, like, little factoids about this, though. One is that Meltdown is the ability uh, Gestol was trying to use to stop Kefka on the floating continent. At the very end of everything, he was trying to cast Meltdown. There's kind of this idea that... Gestal had control of Crusader or something at that point, just like he had control of uh, Phoenix. And also, in terms of other people using Meltdown, remember how the spellcasters get spells at high enough level? At like level 80 or something. I think it's like level 86. 86, guys! Terra is only level 54, but at level 86, Terra learns Meltdown herself. I guess that's because of her half Esper blood or something. Or what are we saying at that point? She's as strong as an Esper. Kind of nuts. Uh, but there you go. That's the Crusader situation. And I'm rambling and I don't really know where I'm going. There was no way across on the left. So this is my only choice. So we can move. Hello, Setzer. I see you there. So if I press both at once, does it pull the barriers down? No, it opens the door. So I'd need my third teammate there. But... I don't want these guys standing on these. So it must be then that team one can go and knock those weights down, surely. All right, back over to team one. Oh, no, this wasn't what the Warring Triad were in. These were what the various Espers were in, aren't they? And they broke out. Oh, yeah, and I've got even more to talk about there, actually. Okay, so we have seen all the Espers now. But remember that story moment, literally in this room with these things that broke out? Oh, shit, Shadow is confused and has auto death and that's quite scary here comes the great grand delta hopefully we're okay there's a flare i really should deal with the confuse maybe we're all right though snowball nice okay <laughs> i thought that was at least gonna look like snowstorm oh my god mog is so de deadly that was awesome um yeah remember how we saw a bunch of these break out maduin w was one of them i think and we got that little bit of story i don't have to cleanse the confuse now it's fixed right um what about all the other ones broke out? So, I will stop going on about the Game Boy Advance very shortly. In fact, I think this might be the final thing that I mentioned with it. But, uh, yeah, we have these espers. The Game Boy Advance adds three more to the bottom. And I believe one, maybe even two of them, are associated with those ones that broke out of those, those, those tubes. Uh, so, I'm going to let uh, the editing version of me mention who they are now. Okay, actually, no, I'm technically wrong. I'd re uh, misread my r notes a little. There are four new espers in the GBA edition. My god, the amount of content that's in there is nuts. One of which, though, we already talked about, so there are only three more to do, but th that's this guy here. That's Le Leviathan. You can see the art style is a little bit different, a little bit smoother or whatever. That's for getting back on the boat, the ferry at Nikea, and it attacks you. You kill him. You get him. A good big staple of a lot of the future games, Leviathan. Fairly common summon. In fact, if you guys have played 15, there's a really crazy cool se sequence with Leviathan that's like one of my favorite parts of the whole game. Next is this guy. This is Gilgamesh. 
So his like visual design here. So Gilgamesh is again very iconic. All of these are going to be crazy iconic for the FF franchise, but which were originally missing from six. So Gilgamesh, uh, I believe here is visually this very similar to how he looked in the previous game five. His whole shtick in all the games is having loads of weapons. Usually he's like associated with the Genji gear and stuff. So the method of getting him is kind of amazing. You can get him really early in the world of Ruin. They updated the auction house. So you go to pay for an auction. You know, there's those joke auctions. Eventually. Actually, some they'll be talking about like this amazing sword apparently, but you buy it and it's terrible. It's called the Excalibur, and so then you take this sword. Remember, Gilgamesh likes to collect swords. You take the Excalibur to the Colosseum. You bet it at the Colosseum, a bit like proccing a special battle with Siegfried. And instead, you'll you'll proc a battle with like an Onion Dasher or something. You kill that and, and he comes in. Then you beat him and he joins your team. So he he joins you a lot like how Shadow joins you, and it's kind of a nice little update for the Colosseum. He's also another way of learning quick in instead of having to go all the way through the ancient castle for Odin and Raiden, or I guess just Raiden. Also, Wiki says that, yeah, he's one of the espers that were in these, like, these tubes that broke out, and, uh, well, you can actually get him there. Next one is this guy, the Cactar, and he's kind of, uh, again, he's from the Magitek facility. He's, a, a, again, a, like a dual summon, so, and again, referential to the other FFs, like, uh, you can get him in 8, I'm pretty sure, um, the Gigantar. So, here's the idea with him, when you summon him, you don't know exactly what you'll get. You might get a regular Cactar, and when I say a regular character, I mean literally like the enemies that you can fight in that desert that I was grinding on for the AP. Or, if you get lucky, you might get the Gigantar. And the Gigantar will do like 999 damage to everything on screen, but it's kind of like really unreliable. He does have mechanical use though. He gives you speed. So that's how the GBA release got around this weird Odin Raiden issue. And the Pixel Remaster just did a patch for it in their own way. But they got around it by just saying, okay, we'll give you character with speed. And on top of that, he actually teaches you the spell Hastesia faster than even Quetzali would. Which kind of muscles in on Quetzali's thing, to be honest. Because Quetzali's just go back to the beach. Like, there's nothing stopping you do that. Now Quetzali seems a bit useless, I guess, in the GBA. Uh, but yeah, he's kind of a fun idea as a summon. The, the way you actually find him is that very same desert that I was grinding Cactars in. You kill 10 of them and keep doing random encounters and then you get a random encounter and this guy comes along. And then you kill him in a random encounter and you get his Magisite. So a lot more of this thing where you're fighting the summons before you collect them, uh, which I always enjoy. But there you go. So that's three of the four. And the final one, kind of saved the best for last here, is this guy, is Diabolos. So Diabolos uh, debuted for the anthology in eight. So a couple of games away. So when they put it in the GBA edition, it was, you know, like one of these backport ideas. Uh, again, the idea is he was at the Magitek facility. Where you get this guy, though, is at the end of the dragon's den. So what does that mean? That means you've killed all the dragons, broken the seal, collected a crusader, gone into the new dungeon, and killed the Kaiser dragon. So you've already done, like, basically everything. You already have crusader. It kind of makes him the new final, I suppose. Uh, so what does he offer you? Well, unfortunately, kind of not anything too good. Like, his moves are gravity-based moves that he teaches you. His special is interesting enough. It reduces all enemies to 1 16th of their max HP. So it puts them on the edge of death, and it ignores if they're classically immune to that, like, through death immunity. So it puts them all to 1 16th, and then it puts sap on them as well, so they're draining HP. Which is a really cool vibe and a cool idea for an ability, but at that point... You're doing so much damage, and you've beaten so much of the game anyway. You know, how much stuff do you really have to spend that on anyway? Wiki makes the note that this would be good in a low-level run. But, I mean, Christ, you're on a low-level run, and you've done all that already? Uh, he's a fun one, definitely. And believe it or not, I've actually known about him being in the Game Boy Advanced edition for ages and ages and ages now. Uh, but there you have it. That is every Esper in FF6 across all the editions. So, there you have it. Let's move on. And we have a very tiny little room. Ah, uh, here again. I think this little U-shaped cave room. There's a really rare mob in here. Yeah, here it is. The Fiend Dragon. I think this thing is really rare. Because most people, like, you're in this room for, like, two seconds. So why would you get into a fight with it? Wouldn't it be insane if I beat this now and it says, Ding! Seen all enemies. Bestiary complete. There's no way that that's going to happen. Especially not the way that we were doing this in the world of balance. Oh, so he's got Southern and Northern Cross, I guess, eh? Holy shit. That was a lot of damage. Oh my god, Heartless Angel. Oh my god, is he going to kill us? Go on, Mog, finish him off, finish him off. Okay, good, he killed him. That was three pretty big hits. Yeah, uh, the whole thing with the eight sealed dragons, and then there's a bunch of other dragons in the game, it feels like messy, but also makes me so scared of all the other ones. Uh, how's Realms MP? Very low. Bit worried about that. 
Let's spam Cura here. This is our uh, benefit of putting a bunch of Espers onto Shadow. Even though most people wouldn't, they'd keep him nice and clean for the Colosseum. Okay, so now we're here. Get another chest. Pinwheel, okay. Not too exciting. In fact, one of the least exciting things you can get since it's a consumable, you know. Let's just hit Q. Actually, if I see Realm does a physical attack now with her rod, yeah. What we should do is when that next... Oh my god, both Strago and Realm are doing it, actually. We should just do a double Osmos here. We could try Control as well. Oh, does she not have Osmos? God damn it, Realm. Alright, I'll teach you that in a second. Let's Control instead. Ah, Mog's probably finished this off. Oh! The death animation is playing weirdly, and it said four... Because there are four enemies there. There's four dragons all stacked on top of one another. That seems like a bug. But also, maybe it's just the gimmick they're going for? That's crazy. Oh my god, shouldn't they all be spread out? Well, I just caught that. I just realized what was happening there. Do you have Osmos? You do. Alright, now he's controlled and he's facing the other way. So let's see. Osmos won't snap him out of it, right? That's not physical. Oh, only 160 MP. That's not good, too good. What do we get? Oh, we get White Wind. Nice. I think he already knows White Wind, doesn't he? Or is it Mighty Guard I got him? Not enough MP. Oh, oh we could totally teach Strago White Wind if he doesn't already have it. Let's see. Law. No, he does already have it. He has White Wind. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll just let Mog finish it off. Maybe throw an attack in with Shadow. I think what I'm going to do is Ether. I'm going to have to Ether her. Um... There you go, there's the Doom proc from the Cursed Shield, but we heal. Nice little delayed heal. It's like Patient Spirit, guys. <laughs> How many people watching this know what Patient Spirit is? I'd assume a good few. Uh, right. And I don't have to feel bad about using ethers and stuff now. Even though we have almost none, because we're at the end of the game. Like, where else? Like, here we go, I'm going to even use the X ether. Boom. That probably means the high ethers were a waste if that fully recharged. Yeah, fully restores. Okay, well, whatever. It doesn't matter. We got tents and stuff as well when we find another thing. Uh, and then, yeah, so Realm. Who is it that gave us Cataplate Pass? No. It was like one of the iconic. I think Shiva. Shiva's really weird in this game because she has so many abilities, you know? She has Cure. She has the Blizzard spells, but then also Rasp and Osmos. You'd think maybe she'd just have Rasp, someone else gets Osmos? Anyway, so there you go. Realm, you learn Shiva because that's really important for you. Okay. So we move on. Ah. Yeah, we are in the center now. Oh, and the doors are... Okay. Oh, we didn't even have to stand... Oh. Of course, we don't have to weigh these down. You just tap them. So what are the four-ton weights for, then? Maybe we throw the weights on again. They're like double pressure plaids with even more pressure on them. These guys will be able to go through here. I'm convinced that's what's going to happen. So I'm going to move them in position. I think now this team's going to get up to those weights. Yeah, look, look, we are. We are. We can already do it. Oh, no, sort of. No. Ugh. Three more pressure pads here. Oh, I'm locked. Oh, I see what they're going to do here. This is kind of clever. We're going to drop the weight, and then this team's going to go through and go there, drop that weight, and we're all going to be together. Oh, weird. That's such a strange animation. That is more than I was expecting. Hold on. Before I do that, though, what does this do? Oh, I think that's just going to open that door eventually. So how do I get on the left? Hmm... Alright, well, let's let's just run on through here. This is cool. Look, we're so close to each other. Working as a team. Like, this is cool. I like this mechanic, you know? Alright, we're locked in. Throw the weight down. And it's amazing, actually, because still, at this point, we're all separated. We move through. Okay, so one. Two. Sorry, Seth, so you've got a little bit more of a walk to do here. Oh, I didn't even know if we could get fights here. This is Gamma again. Let's just see what everybody's queued for. Gamma Rays inflicts doom. Oh, my God. 9K, 9K. Oh, there he's dead. And then we got, a, a, what was that, a 2 and an 8? 
Very nice. There we have it. Oh, we're still not allowed through, actually. I thought I really thought we were going to unite. Maybe this explains the side corridors now. All right, guys. I did this a couple of episodes ago. I said I hated that I did it. I'm going to do it again, though. Uh, I'm splitting the episode in half. Sorry, but this was like three and a half hours. There is... And we're already, what, an hour and quarter in? So there's a, another hour and a quarter left for the end of the dungeon, plus all the big story and stuff. So the actual finale is going to be on the next part. <laughs> Some of you guys probably got a sense of that from the track bar. But, you know, it's I really don't like the idea of people coming online and seeing, like, a three-hour episode and thinking, fuck that, I can't be bothered to watch that, it's too much. Because it is too much. I usually like an episode about 40 minutes to an hour long because I'll watch it before, before I go to bed. I'm trying to bring it back to that level. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm cutting it here the finale and it will be the same you know sequence the f we're in the finale sequence but the actual episode will be on the next one thank you very much for watching hope you guys enjoyed and i will see you soon for what you can see in the background here i've cut the original commentary off here uh, i'm fighting a, a pretty fun boss that appeared in some of the earlier story too maybe you remember him uh so yeah see you guys on the next part very soon take care now